Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Jamie Dumas and I am the communications manager here at Welcome MD. If you are new to Welcome MD, we are a concierge medicine practice with offices in Richmond, Virginia and Charlotte, North Carolina. We are very happy that Dr. John Woodward is with us this, this evening to talk about understanding shockwave therapy for erectile dysfunction. Dr. Woodward is double board certified by the American Board of Family Medicine and the American Board of Integrative and Holistic Medicine. He is fellowship trained in anti-aging and regenerative medicine and has a master's of science in cardiac rehabilitation and exercise physiology rehabilitation. He is passionate about using an integrative approach to make sure his patients are getting the individualized care that they need. If you have any questions throughout the program, we will be doing a Q&A at the end. If you look at the bottom of your screen, if you are joining us live here on Zoom, you will see a Q&A box. That is the way that you can anonymously submit any questions that you have, and I will feed them to Dr. Woodward at the end of the session. So please don't hesitate. If you have questions, shoot them right there in that box, um, and we will go ahead and answer those for you at the end. With that, Dr. Woodward, I will hand it over to you to get us started this evening. Great, thanks, Jamie, and welcome. Um, thanks for investing uh, some of your night with us. I'm excited to deliver this topic tonight because it's a, it's a, it's a topic not talked about much. It's a topic that's sensitive, yet it adds a lot to quality of life, and it could be an indication of a significant illness early on. And so we'll talk about that. Some, some of these statistics tonight that I'll talk about are, are concerning. So. Um, this is, this is a, almost a call to action if there is a concern for you or a loved one or somebody that has uh, some concern with this. So uh, please share this information with people that may benefit from this because you'll see that it's much more than sexual wellness. It's, it's really uh, your overall wellness. And so this is going to impact multiple areas of your life. And so let's go ahead and move forward with this. Um, again, this, this carries with it a lot of other issues with quality of life, including mental, physical, emotional, uh, social impact, confidence level. The big piece that, I'll, that you'll take home from this tonight is that with our clinic, with our concierge integrative wellness clinic, we focus on lifestyle. And the only way to reverse this disease is through lifestyle practice. Can we do other techniques to really help the function and the, and the, the um, the health of the tissue that we're, that we're targeting. Absolutely, we can do that. And we can accelerate, really accelerate that biological process of healing, regeneration, and function again. And that's, I know that's what's most in front of us mostly, but what I wanna do is uncover some things that we really need to get to the root cause here. So we'll talk about some signs and symptoms and, and how we really dig into this a little further. So I have about 30 slides, so I won't, take too long on any one of those, but you know, this has been going on for a long time. And I just put this timeline up here to, to mention that, you know, this has been addressed since 2600 BC, as far as they, they are aware of and, and digging up the literature. But as we've gone through the ages here, we, we've really come and haven't come to any breakthroughs until the 1960s with this. And so this is really a new science, it's a new medicine in a lot of ways um, from a medical standpoint, but the significance is real. And so one out of, one out of five men or 20% over the age of 20 have some level of erectile dysfunction, which is much more than I expected after doing the basic epidemiology research on this. And so over half the men, uh, 50%, 40 to 50% of men over the age of 40 have some issues with this. 70% over the age of 70. So this is, a, this is the Massachusetts male aging study that indicated how significant this problem is. But here's the more disturbing uh, problem that I see is that 75% of the men aren't even being treated, aren't even being diagnosed, aren't even being approached on, on how to do this. Either we're not screening enough for it, we're not bringing it up with our physicians, or I'm not bringing it up enough in our visits. So you know, realize you're definitely not alone out there. As you can tell with these stats, look around in an audience next time. There's a lot of people that struggle with this condition. And so, and we can help, but we're gonna approach it appropriately. Not just like any other clinic, men's clinic out there that offers a shot and a pill. And so we're gonna dig in from a root cause analysis and a functional integrative pathway, but also the best of the conventional medicine pathways. So, 
So, you know, let's go along through this and, and take a look. In functional medicine, we talk about root cause analysis. So traditional ED in erectile dysfunction treatments or sexual wellness treatments, really not that long ago, you got a blue pill. If that didn't work, you got potentially an injection. If that didn't work, you went to surgery pretty quickly in that order. And so we, a lot of those approaches, we don't focus on the underlying root cause, the inflammation. As you can see down here in, in, in the roots of this tree here, these are where the real problems exist. Believe it or not, sleep can impact it. Alcohol intake can impact it, lack of exercise. And so when we look at this and we focus on the root cause analysis, blood sugar dysregulation. In fact, one out of two diabetics have erectile dysfunction. One out of two, 50% of them have it. And so almost 40 million Americans have erectile dysfunction. So as you can tell, this is a big, big issue. And so functional medicine will approach this in, in, in the way that we do this at Wellness uh, Welcome MD is we look at the hormones, we look at the underlying cardiovascular assessments to make sure the blood flow pathways are open and appropriate. And if they're not, we need to you know, target the vascular system as part of an ongoing treatment plan. So we, we'll, we'll dig into this a little further in terms of how we address that. And the known causes of sexual dysfunction or ED, 80%, 75 to 80% are what we call vasogenic or vascular disease. So on this organic side here, we see that the majority are gonna be cardiovascular. In other words, something has to do with the vascular system. It's not usually just one thing, however. It's usually neurovascular. And so we need to pay attention to neurologic disease as well. So someone who's had a stroke, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, um, a spinal cord injury for, for that uh, matter, um, local trauma to the penis, a penis fracture, um, significant uh, damage to the testicles that may impact hormone production, and, um, and more in particular, drug-induced. And so we are the most over-medicated over society in the world. And when you think about medications, we think about the two big ones, cardiovascular medications with diuretics and beta blockers. Um, and we can talk about those in the Q&A a little bit antidepressant medications such as lithium or SSRIs, Lexapro, Celexa, some of those. Um, some of the anti-androgen medications such as Lupron and some folks who are being treated for, um, for prostate cancer would be on that, that kind of medication. So, but one of the biggest things I find is alcohol is, is the drug that's commonly abused and commonly causes effects of this. So, that's one of the areas that, that we need to address when, when digging into the organic reasons why. And of course, hormonally. And everyone focuses on testosterone. However, there's other hormones that we look at, such as prolactin. If you haven't had your prolactin level checked and this is a problem, that may be an easy answer. And there are medications we can give to reduce your prolactin levels. And so it needs to be a comprehensive evaluation. Thyroid disease can affect your, your, your function. So we, you, when you work this up, you need to have a comprehensive evaluation to understand the, under, the, the underlying um, etiology behind it. So psychologically, depression, anxiety, relationship problems, um, stress levels, for instance. We're in COVID-19. Um, there's been, it's difficult for the job market, difficult to socialize. Um, we have some psychological reasons, you know, that, that could address this. So these are some general general ideas, but we'll dig in, especially in the Q&A if you have more questions about it. There's the three different types of erections, and one of them is psychogenic. This is the audiovisual, the fantasy piece, um, reflexogenic, stimulation by touch. So any kind of touch friction uh, could increase that type of erection. And nocturnal, this happens at night, spont spontaneous erections. In fact, this is one of the ways we even evaluate erectile function is to look at this nocturnal erection and there's actually ways and, and tools to do that. And so all of these, what they do is they, they, they stimulate the neurotransmitters in the brain. And those neurotransmitters through this cascade of events allows nitric oxide. And I'm gonna focus on nitric oxide because it's a big player in this game. It's what's going to dilate those blood vessels to create the erection. 
And those could come from stimulation from the brain, stimulation from the vascular system, from hormones like testosterone, um, or from medications perhaps. So smooth muscle relaxation is something that, that we wanna focus on because that's gonna be the target here with the tissue and the treatment options. So drugs that commonly cause erectile dysfunction like we spoke about are the cardiovascular drugs, the beta blockers and diuretics, the antidepressants, uh, the anti-androgen drugs and the alcohol and tobacco because we know that tobacco really impacts your cardiovascular uh, illness. It, you know, you smoke a cigarette, it constricts the blood vessels instantly. So we don't want that. We want, remember, relaxation of the blood vessels is what we're after for optimal uh, erectile function. So, you know, there's a strong connection between erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular disease. We now call it a cardiovascular equivalent, okay? Here is the big thing. I'm showing you kind of the pathophysiology. If blood can't get into the blood vessels, if you don't have good arterial blood flow, it's the blood flow that goes into the penis that then constricts and blocks the veins from the blood getting out. So if you don't have good blood flow in, we need to work on the vascular system because that's what's going to maintain the erection. And so, you know, this is the biggest piece of the puzzle. If you have vascular disease in your penis, you have vascular disease everywhere, including your carotid arteries, including your heart, including your brain, everywhere. So this is a significant piece. So let me just give you a little bit more information on this. So when, when we think about narrowing of the blood vessel, the carotid arteries, or excuse me, the penile arteries are about one to two millimeters. The, cor the coronary arteries in the heart are about three to four millimeters. The carotid arteries are six to seven millimeters. And so which, which vessels clog off first are the smallest ones. So if we're clogging off the arteries in the penis, it's a matter of time before we end up with disease in our heart or our brain. So an acute heart attack or stroke is, is eminent if we don't curb and attack the vascular underlying pinnings of the vascular disease. And this is what functional integrative ED management looks at because this comes three years before the heart attack. When we, when, if you've had ED for three plus years, 15% of those folks have an acute event in the next five years. So one out of seven. So this is significant. So now you can see the magnitude of why I'm saying this is an important topic to talk about. 75% of these men aren't being treated, guys. So we need to really approach this from, a, from better diagnostics. And at Welcome MD, of course, we, we do pretty deep dives into understanding not only your anatomy from the heart and the carotids, and as we approach erectile function. Um, so we want to make sure that we have a good understanding of your risks and how to make it an action plan to reduce the and reverse the cardiovascular piece of this. And for the first time, the American Urologic Association is saying you can reverse the disease process through lifestyle. And there's, there's a mountain of evidence to support that at this point. So, so what I want to show you here, just, you know, blood pressure, penile artery, carotid artery, femoral artery. The femoral artery is the largest. I don't see my, uh, my cursor in here. That's okay. But if, if you look at the box on the left, this is just talking about how it's the big warning sign. And in the inner lining of the blood vessel is called the endothelium. And that's where the center of that screen takes you is the endothelial injury. So once the lining of the blood vessel is damaged, the dysfunction starts. And when the dysfunction starts, vascular disease begins. So nitric oxide helps you maintain that endothelial layer. So we'll talk about how does someone get more nitric oxide? And we're gonna get into that here in a minute. So, you know, let's talk about the diagnostic evaluation. There's different questionnaires. The most well-known questionnaire is called the SHIM or the International um, Erectile Function Test. Um, we do lots of lab work for some people that, that have this issue. We wanna look at their hormones, their, their comprehensive hormones, not just testosterone like some of these clinics on the corner would do. Um, we wanna make sure we do an advanced blood sugar analysis because as we know, the two big disease states out there are heart disease and blood sugar dysregulation diabetes. Remember, one out of two diabetics have this or will have it. And so 
80, 75, 80% of ED is vascular. So we want to really target this. We want to, we want, this might be our tip off to do a deep dive and find out if there's bigger problems out there to come. So we'll, we'll talk about some lifestyle questionnaires and do an assessment on your lifestyle, your exercise management. How is your diet? Do you have plenty of nitrate rich foods for nitric oxide? And we'll talk about that. How is, uh, how is your sleep? Are you sleeping well? If you're not sleeping well, that can have an impact on not only hormones, but stress responses and other things. Um, you know, we, we can do ultrasounds if we're concerned about certain things called venous leaks and other things that, uh, that, are, it, that happens much less often, but it's something that we could obtain if needed. So a comprehensive diagnostic evaluation is needed for this, guys. So these are the questionnaires, and these are the, uh, the, the scores and the assessment pieces that we use. The SHIM that I talked about earlier, and we're going to submit a SHIM questionnaire to anyone on the, on the webinar tonight, just so you have it, and you can rate yourself. And that's gonna be your indication of whether you have severe, moderate, mild to moderate, or mild disease. And either way, if it's interfering with your life, or like we talked about already, let's do a deeper dive. Let's help you from a global health perspective, not just sexual function, if that's the case. But we certainly wanna help the sexual function and erectile piece. Uh, erectile um, dysfunction piece. So um, we're going to talk about this erectile hardness score, and we'll talk about the, the five to six questions that the sexual health inventory for men score goes through. But this is what the American Urolo Urologic Association uses. And so they make it real simple with visuals here. So if the, if the penis is large but not hard, it's the consistency and firmness of tofu. Um, if it's if your erectile hardness score is a two, you peel the banana, and that's the that's the kind of the tensile strength or the or the consistency, the hardness score, um, not usually hard enough for penetration. And number three, the unpeeled banana, it's hard enough for penetration, but not completely. Hard. Sometimes it's not able to finish the sexual experience. And number four, it's it's hard, rigid usually very mild, if at all, any dysfunction. So as you're thinking about this, these are things, or your partner is thinking about this, these are some things to discuss and talk about, where do I score? So the American Urologic Association, one of the things we, we talk about is, remember how I told you initially it was, here's your blue pill, here's your injection, and then it's surgery. Well, now they updated their algorithm uh, in, in, in terms of the American Urologic Association. And what they say is use decision, share decision making, and you could use any one, of, any one of them right from the beginning. You can go right to surgery. You can go right to injection. You can go right to the pill. But what you'll see in the top box is the importance of lifestyle, weight loss, exercise, smoking cessation, alcohol, um, addressing abusive alcohol practices, so these, I like it that they start with the lifestyle piece. And what we need to do is really put a formal structured plan together for you that's going to target blood flow into the penis. Remember, the, we need those arteries to fill the penis in order to occlude the veins so the erection lasts longer. And so we've, we have to approach it. Exercise helps that. And so nitric oxide helps that. Um, Nitrate-rich foods help that. Let's pull anything out of the equation that might be impacting uh, the vascular system. So, you know, and then we assess this as we go through it, decide if we need to increase doses or move to another therapy or stack therapies together in order to do this. Now, I'm going to introduce a couple other therapies that are not on this list, but I did want to include these because we can do a lot of these. Most of what we're encouraging tonight are non-surgical approaches. So, um, and I think that's what most people would like to start with if they could. And so, um, you know, and I don't know if you've seen the surgery for this, but it's pretty significant. Um, it is an option for some men, but it, it's, an, it's a significant surgery. So I think there are better options up front. So let's talk, let's get into the treatments. So hormone therapy, I want to say this, you should be evaluated by someone that is able to analyze and assess comprehensive hormone treatment. They need to know how to put the assessments together, do the complete hormone history, 
not just your hormones not in range yet, so you, you, you don't need the injection. We combine the clinical factors with the levels and put it together and make a personalized approach for you. So some people may not be appropriate for hormone therapy. Some people may be very appropriate. The American Academy of Family Physicians and the American College of Physicians now says that's a very appropriate use of, of hormone therapy as erectile dysfunction. So know this, so acoustic wave shock waves, I'm gonna talk about that tonight. We have that machine in our office. We have that ability to deliver that therapy to you and I'm gonna talk about that here in a minute. There are peptide therapies out there. Peptides can enhance the ability of the tissue to generate and maintain better erections, particularly in those people that Viagra or some of the vasodilators don't work for, like the Cialis and Levitra and some of those medications. Um, nitric oxide is, is one of those things that I recommend people get supplementation for. We need to increase your nitric oxide levels in your body so when those drugs or when the body calls upon it through neurotransmitters in the brain, through a reflex touch mechanism, or through, um, through some, other, some other method, testosterone actually increases nitric oxide as well. And so we wanna make sure that your pool is elevated and we can test your nitric oxide levels and give you some recommendations around that. Cellular therapy, what cellular therapy means is we can add growth factors into your penis to improve the vascular tissue uh, integrity and help it regenerate faster. If there's vascular disease, if there's fibrosis and, and, and damage to that tissue, how can we re re repair it, excuse me, um, on a, at a much more expedient level and shorten that treatment time window? And it's been shown to have some promise in that area. Uh, PRP therapy stands for platelet-rich plasma. And that, that again is similar to the cellular therapy. So where we add, we add nutrients into the, uh, into your penis through an injection. You're completely numb, by the way, and I can explain that further in the Q&A. Um, so the PRP is blood that we take out of your body and we spin it down in a special centrifuge and then we siphon off what we call the platelet-rich plasma and it's rich with, rich with growth factors, rich with growth factors that are gonna help repair the tissue and especially the vascular tissue. So, that's, that's an area of strong interest, and that could be added to the shockwave therapy as, as another means of, of really stacking the therapies on one another. I believe that this loop of treatment is, the optimal way to do this is synergistically, almost in, with using those treatments in parallel. Not try one, then try the other, then try the other. That doesn't work as well. It's kind of like cardiovascular disease. Do we only use a pill? or do we exercise and eat well and sleep better? It's all works together. It's synergistic interventions that we wanna do here to give you the, set you up for success, give you the best treatment options available. And this is where I think we stand out from a functional medicine standpoint is we wanna set you up for success and give you all of the treatment lines available to you and choose the ones that are right for you depending on the severity of your illness. So lifestyle factors, of course, overemphasizing uh, the importance of exercise, sleep, exercise, stress reduction or tolerance. This can impact the brain. This can impact the neurotransmitter conduction. This can impact fatigue scores. Um, a lot of these things can impact this. So again, alcohol, improved nutrition. There are certain toxic elements that potentially could get in our way. And so any, and, and when I say toxic elements, I'm really referring to these toxic elements that might impair the dilation of the blood vessels that might impair nitric oxide formation, um, things that might impair blood flow. And so what I've listed here are a bunch of nitrate rich foods, spinach, lettuce, beets, everyone knows about beets with nitric oxide. Arugula salad actually is the most, it's the highest, it's above beets for the most, most part. Most people didn't realize that. So if you have an arugula beet salad, wonderful for erectile function. Start eating that regularly. Add some Swiss, Swiss chard and, and some spinach in there and, and you're, you're gonna be a, have a great night. So um, again, nitric rich foods and exercise, again, we can start incorporating these on a daily basis. This is a, a supplement that we use in our office called the Berkeley Life Professional. It comes with test strips and the test strips have been validated. 
You literally just put the test strip in your mouth, squeeze it together, and it gives you a score of high, medium, low, where's your nitric oxide ranking right now? And so they of course have supplements that are high dose nitric oxide. I personally take the nitric oxide. Remember, it dilates the blood vessels. So it's gonna help dilate the blood vessels here, in the heart, in the brain, everywhere, including the, the penis and help with erection. So nitric oxide keeps that endothelial layer healthy. Remember, that's the lining of the blood vessel. They're pointing that out here in the blood vessel up to the right. That lining is the endothelium and that's, that's responsive. When the nitric oxide hits the endothelium, it dilates the blood vessel. So the more nitric oxide we have, the more we dilate the penis. So some medications, I, I just wanted to at least introduce some medications if you're not aware of them. Um, these medications, for the most part, are 66% effective. They have a lot of side effects, and, and therefore about 50% of the people actually stop using them because of the side effects, or use them less because they don't want to deal with the side effects. But you can see these were when these drugs were developed. They, they have some good efficacy. They, they, they really can, can work well. So um, sometimes the effectiveness is up to 80%, especially in more mild to moderate disease. And so they may be part of that adjunct therapy. It might be one of the tools we use in, in, in addition to a number of things. So this is a, uh, another device that we spoke about br briefly is the, a vacuum erection device. There are multiple on the market. Most of them are over the counter. Um, it's, you know, what, what they do is of course they create a suction, the air leaves the suction tool and, and causes an erect penis. And then there is a, constriction ring placed at the bottom so you can maintain your erection prior to. Side effects to this also uh, could be bruising, numbness, um, discomfort uh, with this device. Um, I wanted to go back here really quickly and make a quick note that everyone should know since this stuff is available online, um, and, I, in, and again, I don't know how legitimate the online stuff is. It may be too strong, it may be contaminated with things. I don't know if it comes from the manufacturer. If you take nitroglycerin for cardiac disease, you should not be taking these medications. It can drop your blood pressure to dangerous levels. You can have a syncopal or pass out episode. It can cause cardiac related symptoms. So be very clear if you do take these and you ever go to the emergency department with chest pain, you need to tell them that you're on this medication so they don't give you nitroglycerin because it can be life threatening and dangerous. This is another one that I do prescribe in the office and this is called a trimix or a bimix intercavernosal injection. So when I say intercavernosal, you see the corpus cavernosum, these two big spongy looking cylinders on both sides. Those are the dilation mechanisms of the penis. So we wanna maintain healthy corpus cavernosum. We want that to be filled with rich blood supply. We want those arteries healthy and rich. And so, one of the things this Trimix can do, if people were struggling with some of the other methods out there, is you can, of course, alcohol the skin where the injection site is and inject into the penis. Within five to 10 minutes, this is very effective. You have a very effective erection. And most men are, after they get over the stigma of injecting themselves, are pretty pleased. They and their partners are pretty pleased with the results of this. It's, it's a very effective method especially if we need to go to this method. So I want you to know that we're, we're not just talking about the shockwave and, the, and, and a comprehensive approach, but this would be part of a comprehensive approach if we needed to use these tools, these conventional tools, because they do work and we could use those to, to improve you and, and, um, and help your sexual wellness more immediate if needed. So let's get into the, the kind of the main events, if you will. So shockwave therapy. In shockwave therapy, this extracorporeal shockwave therapy admits these pulsations, if you will. A lot of men like pulsations better than shock, that word, of course. Um, you know, these shock waves, we do about 1,500 to 2,000 treatments on each of seven treatment areas. And so we stimulate all the areas where the neurovascular bundles are coming into the penis to improve the health of the tissue. So like it says here, six to 12 treatments, we base that off of the severity of the rectile, the shim score and, and your erectile firmness score. And, and, and based on what, how you would present, how happy are you with your function? So uh, we just finished treatment with a gentleman in the clinic 
Um, we did the six treatments. He felt like he was getting some benefit after the first couple, which was, which was good to hear. Um, we ended up doing the, a PRP shot in addition to that. Um, and so um, it, the combination of the two therapies works very well. You don't have to do the PRP, but it is, it can potentiate, again, adding more layers of treatment to this plan. So what you should know is that we have this tool, this shockwave tool, it's by Stores Medical, which is a top of the line uh, shockwave type of treatment. But it's been, it's been FDA approved for plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendonitis. We don't use it for the heart in our clinic, but just as an example, we, we have protocols that we can use it for different musculoskeletal conditions. So as much as it's useful to regenerate tissue and correct tissue that's damaged and sore and needs some regeneration, it's, it's FDA approved uh, on use of some musculoskeletal conditions as well. So what does a shockwave do? And this kind of gets at the heart of it. And I know this is a, you know, if, you're, if you don't like science, I know this scares people, but the shockwave activates even nerve repair. And this is where it's questionable from someone who's had a prostatectomy um, or somebody that has had nerve damage from something else, trauma or something else. So um, it can help with that. The, the research doesn't show great success with that, but it, it anecdotally, uh, people are still trying it and some people are getting some good results. So as we talked about, the shock wave can restore normal endothelial signaling, which is where that NO or that nitric oxide is, you know, regenerates and, and creates more of. As we age, by the way, guys, we have less nitric oxide. So it doesn't go up, it goes down as we age. And so if it goes down as we age, even more reason to focus on diet, exercise, and some of these integrative tools. If it goes down as we age, maybe supplementation may be needed after we test your nitric oxide levels. Um, so we also know that cardiac disease every decade of life worsens. Interestingly, nitric oxide goes down, vascular disease worsens, ED worsens. The number one risk factor for ED is aging. That's the tough part. So how do we turn on the biological mechanisms to help preserve your tissue? And, and, and the shock wave creates a stimulus that recruits your immune cells, that recruits wound healing, that recruits local stem cells to the area for healing and repair. Um, so it activates resident stem cells. And so the, the tissue regeneration is fascinating. The tissue regeneration of that endothelial layer that releases nitric oxide is fantastic. And so there are, there's numerous studies that so, show shockwave with the cellular repair, reductions in pain, it certainly can help. This is low dose shockwave therapy. If any of you have heard of lithotripsy for kidney stones, it's a similar, similar technique. It's just a low dose pulsation, not, not a very high pulsation to break up and cause damage to tissue like a kidney stone. So the, the evidence is, is there, the evidence is all over the place that it's safe for erectile dysfunction. It's very effective. Urologists in, in 2018, are now doing this type of therapy in their clinics more and more. Um, you know, not all, not many of them, but some of them. But my thought is this, is that we need to consider, are you gonna get the comprehensive approach? Who's gonna reverse your cardiovascular disease and your diabetes and increase your nitrate levels and coach you around nitrate rich foods and build an exercise program for you? That's what the integrative functional approach does. We're not gonna leave any stone unturned in terms of really digging into your, your comprehensive treatment plan. And so a lot of times with Shockwave, we, we base it off of some algorithms that exist out there. Sometimes we have to personalize it to the patient. We're going to base it off of their erectile function score. And so, you know, that SHIM score is going to give you, give you a score. And, and if the score is between zero and 10, we know it's very severe. We probably wouldn't do anything under 12 or recommend anything under 12 treatments. Um, Mild disease, six treatments, mild to moderate, six to 12. Um, and then we base it off of how you do. If you feel like you're improving, but you need more, then we can do more. And so this is, this is based on, um, you know, the more, the more therapy we give the tissue, the better chance of regeneration. So the, the injection that I talked about, the PRP um, injection, 
it could include other things such as exosomes or stem cells or other things, but PRP is what we use. And we use fiber, you know, what PRP has in it is all of these growth factors that stimulate and repair tissue and encourage vascular flow. And so that's, that's what this is. So we spin this down and we, we spin down the blood in the tube and then we siphon off the rich buffy coat that you see there, the platelets. We siphon off that plasma and then we, then we take out that buffy coat with the platelets and we inject that directly into the penis. Um, in, um, in several different areas. And again, we use a numbing cream, very well tolerated this procedure for the most part, uh, very much. And uh, um, so very little problem. There's risk of bruising with the, with the injection, um, but of course it's a bruise, it's from an injection. So that's not all the time, but it can happen. And lots of studies on stem, stem cell therapy. But really what these growth factors do is they get in there into the smooth muscle. Remember the smooth muscle is what responds to the endothelial layer that dilates the blood vessel. So these, these regenerations are, it decreases fibrosis, which won't let that tissue expand. So it can help with some of that. It can help with some nerve regeneration. It can help with some, with the smooth muscle from being more responsive to treatment. And so, there's roles in this regenerative therapy for tissue engineering, for tissue regeneration, stem cell therapy is, you know, and again, it depends on the degree of damage of where we're at in the ED spectrum here, but we can use some of these, some of these types of growth factors as part of your ED program. And so this was commonly called the P-shot and the P-shot is, um, just shows where things are injected and we inject about a cc and we to total number of injections are five and so um this this shows three but we do two on each side and one into the glands and so we we inject at a 10 and two o'clock position and again our goal is to get in that capra, uh, corpora cavernosa which is where all that rich vascular supply is that we want to create healthier tissue for and so Summing up this new path of treatment and trying to understand what we can offer at Welcome MD is a comprehensive evaluation. If we uncover some things here, we may want to help you do a vascular workup or looking at your blood sugar numbers a little bit more and scrutinize those to make sure we're really dialing that in tightly. Um, we might want to initiate some integrative therapies such as the shock wave or an injection, um, increasing your nitric oxide levels. We could use some of those other conventional pathways that I discussed, the pump, the, um, uh, the trimix injection, the intracavernous injection, um, and um, we can also incorporate um, some of the medications. And some of those, I'm, I'm using all of the above with people right now and I'm getting some success, but we have lots more options available to us. And, and with that, um, I'm just going to, let me see here. I'm gonna open this up for questions and, and I hope this was informative. I hope it gives you more information. I hope it gives you some good questions to ask. Um, and if you, all of you are my patients on tonight, then let's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's bring it up in our, in our discussions together. Again, we, I don't want our clinic to be part of the 75% that I don't ask the questions and, and, and uncover some of these disease states. So um, from there, Jamie, I, I think we'll close. I'll just close the PowerPoint and just, open it up to questions and, um, and go from there. And thanks for spending the time with me tonight.